So Marty, as a CEO and the founder, I'm sure you have seen a lot of resumes, uh, some good, some bad. <laughs> but we all know that it's important to customize when applying for a job. It's important to have those accomplishment statements, those numbers. It's important to have a summary on the top and a, maybe two pages. It depends on the role. But what are some of the trends in 2023? What do you recommend people do when applying for a job? Well, there's there's a there's a number of things that make for a strong resume, mm. um, and and most importantly is your writing style. Mm. People want to see how you communicate, and let's face it, in virtually every job that's out there, you're going to have to write, whether it's through presentations, through emails. Um, it there's always going to be an element of writing, and yes. you know the the way that you write your resume is one way for people to get an indication as to just how well you communicate and how succinctly do you get to the point. Mm -hmm. And so you know the beginning of it is that you know you got to have that really strong value proposition that sits right under your contact information. Yes. In fact, it's a great opportunity to brand yourself. Mm -hmm. Branding is a is a really critical piece. Um, yes any job seeker, but it's especially important in your resume and in your LinkedIn profile. And when you are, yeah. you know, networking with folks, because think about it, there's a hundred other people responding to this job. How do I separate myself yes. from the back? Well, your branding statement can do that. Okay. So it's a good starting place. It's a launching pad that then enables you to then talk more expansively about your background. But you touched on, you know, the fact that the document itself should be very achievement oriented. It yeah, should yeah. not read like a job description. And too many people talk about their responsibilities and every bullet point after bullet point after bullet point is about what they they do in their day-to-day -day operations. And that's not what is interesting to, you know, to the people that are going to hire you. They yeah. want to know what you accomplished. Tell me about the before and after picture. Now, the real art of writing strong bullet points in a resume is how do I talk about the challenge I faced the actions I took and the impact or results of what results, I yes. can get it down to a two line bullet point. Not easy for a lot of people. It's one, it's one of the reasons why a lot of people turn to coaches. Yes. And, and this is really important because you, you've got to be able to convey your value and a lot of the things that you've done during the course of your time with the company. And this is where the bullet points can get that across. Now, what I do want to mention is that there is one issue that is potentially more powerful than a resume or a LinkedIn profile, and that's the cover letter. Mm. A lot of job seekers discount the cover letter, but yeah. I can tell you um, there have been many studies done. Hiring managers, probably more than 80% of them, like to see email cover letters because mm. this is the one place where you can control the story. You cannot yeah. control the story in your resume or your profile. There's just too much content. Yes. But in, in a, in a uh, cover letter, you have an opportunity to tell very specific things from your past. You're not obviously going to tell them all, but you're mm -hmm. going to tie those achievements to key requirements in the job. And, and the fact is, is that you can use this also as a way to get into the hidden job market. market. You can market yourself into companies that don't have advertised job. And it's the cover letter that will enable you to capture the interest for people then wanting to look further into your background. But a lot of times, some companies or the ATS system, the cover letter is an optional. Mm -hmm. So even if it's an option, do you recommend people to write cover letters? Oh, absolutely. Too many people think that the right approach is to upload my resume and hit submit. And I go, that's just the beginning of the process. Yeah. Because you can find any hiring manager and that person's peers on LinkedIn if you know how to use the platform, right? And yeah. as a result, you're then going to email five, six people with inside every company that's got that job that you're interested in and make them aware of your background. And it doesn't have to be people in the department that you're mm -hmm. applying to. Yeah. You know, you might be applying to a finance job, but you should also be identifying the person who is the peer to the, your potential future boss who's in sales, marketing, operations, product development, and let them know, you know, about the three or four key things in your background that are of interest for yeah. this particular position, because you've got to build up advocates inside the company. And it's yeah. so easy today because you can find the right people on LinkedIn. But it's important to have this connection before applying for a job because it will be very, I don't say weird, but if you just started networking or sending a connection request to, let's say, Marty and say, hey, Marty, this is my resume. I know that your company is hiring. This is my value. Can you refer me? I think that connection should be done before sending that, right? 
Uh, not always. Mm. You, you can do connection requests for people that you think you might help might help you. But if I was applying for a marketing job, I would I would send a, an introductory email responding to that job in marketing that I might have an interest in to whoever it might be, the VP of finance, the VP of operations, the VP of uh, of sales, um, to just capture their interest. Because mm -hmm. one of the things they're going to do is they're going to take that email and they're going to send it over to the hiring manager in marketing. Yeah, and I want to build up that that uh, activity and that interest in my background with multiple people who, I, by the way, I don't know. I'm sending them cold emails and cold emails even can be extremely effective because they're not going to hang on to it. They yeah. want to get it off their plate. They want to get yeah. it out of their inbox and over to the right person. And now you've got the right person receiving what might be two, three, four emails from other people. And of course, the interpretation is, well, they, they obviously must think that this person is is worthy of a potential interview. And it gets you a lot more visibility. Yeah. Thank you for those great tips, Martin. I appreciate that. Again, for the audience watching or listening, if you have any other tips in terms of customizing resume, please leave them below. And tune in next time for another great question with Martin.